Hello and welcome back to the DIY IT workshop. My name is David Gewertz and we are going to continue our 3D printing discovery series with this, which is my first complex personal design and I'm going to show you a little about it. Let me first tell you, before I tell you what it is, let me tell you why it is and what makes it interesting and why this is so important in the world of 3D printing. See, this is very, very custom. It's meant entirely for me, for my stuff, for where I sit and do work with the gadgets I use. And that's what makes 3D printing so neat, is that this is designed to fit an exact spot in my work environment with the exact tools I use in the exact way I want to use them. And that's what makes 3D printing so very cool. So let me show you roughly what this is. I'll show it to you in position in a little bit. I'll also go through a little bit about the design and putting it together and some of the choices that went into it, including the first rev, which didn't work out quite so well, and the second rev, which hopefully will work out really well. So this thing is a remote and gadget holder that sits, attaches to a bracket on the back of a monitor. So this is the bracket, it attaches to the back of the monitor, and it holds things like this fan control, just slides in there, this Apple TV remote slides in there. This headphone, the headset, not only slides in here, but charges as well. So this will actually plug into the back through a USB connector to the back of the TV. This goes against the back of the TV and then a remote and another remote that are I use in addition to the Harmony that I use to control the main system. So that's what this is. This is very, very custom. And it's very, very custom because with 3D printing I can make something that's very, very custom. It's so cool. Anyway, let's go and get started with what went into the design, how it was put together, lessons learned, and so forth. So here is the 3D design model for the whole thing. And I built each of these modules separately, but I'm going to show you the whole thing as a module, as the whole thing together first. So let's, let's just take a, a walking tour. This is this orange thing is the main box, and the main box. Let's flip it around here. Will hold the two remote controls, the spare remote controls that I have. One is for the actual monitor, and one is for the Amazon Echo that I have uh, in another room. Uh, you can see also that each of these other pieces is sort of attached, and I used a pin design. Let me show you the pins. Um, so I added pins to connect each of these things together. And um, let's get rid of those for a second so that we can look at the rest of the design without anything kind of getting in the way. Um, the idea was from the way I wound up originally building this thing, I had originally um, printed out this box in this direction. In other words, where the base plate was on the bottom. And what happened was, as I built it, it built supports up through all of these things, which turned out to be an absolute nightmare to remove. So I redesigned it so that I could print flat. And what that means is that uh, the printer can handle a little bit of an angle uh, without having any real problems, without needing to build support. So this whole thing is flat on the print bed, and so the bulk of the printing was the base and then these vertical pieces. So there's nothing hanging in the air that it had to somehow manage. If I had to flip this thing over and print it, let's just say this way, assuming that the foundation was down here, it would have to build all these supports, which is what happened in the original, in my original print, and that turned out to be just completely not good. And since we're here, let's take a moment and watch uh, the main box print on the printer so you can kind of see how it prints out. So everything connects into this main box, and the way I decided to do that was using a combination of pins and glue. And you can kind of see that over here with these holes. And the key to this was I designed each of these pieces separately in their own, uh, in their own uh, CAD file. 
but I had to bring them in here so that I could punch the holes between the devices. And you can see that on the side, the mounting bracket here has the, these holes go through not only the mounting bracket, but also you can see them from the inside in here. And also you can see these pieces down here. Um, and the purpose of that is you can see there's a bit of a, sa a spacing there and that spaces it off the, uh, the mounting bracket itself. So let's take a second and let's watch uh, this bracket print. So let's take a look at the Apple TV mount next. This is the Apple TV mount and it attaches with pins as well, although I ran into some problems in production doing that and I'll show you that uh, in the production process. Here are the pins on the other side and you can see um, the outline of the Apple TV mount through it. Those are much more narrow pins because the walls here are only two and a half millimeters wide so I couldn't use the five millimeter pins. I printed the Apple TV thing with this side flat, so again, we didn't have any overhangs to deal with in the printing. So let's take a moment and watch the Apple TV bracket print. Next up is the um, combination dock here for my headphones. And this was, was quite a complex model. I built this model separately as well in, in its own CAD file. And uh, as I'll show you later on, I actually built individual pieces and test fitted them all first before assembling them together and then taking that whole unit and attaching it to um, this structure so that I could fit the pins back here and, and know where they would mount. Um, but the first thing I built was the spacer to hold the actual um, to hold the actual headphones, and you can kind of see that it's got a bit of an angle, and the headphones slide in. Um, I found that this angle here helped position the headphone properly. And I found that the curve made it land better. When I first put the headphones in, it wobbled back and forth, so I experimented with it. And a curve is really simple to do. You're just basically you take a shape and you subtract another shape with a single uh, with a single action. And then this is the USB holder with the two pins that ho hook onto that piece of USB cord I have. And I was fortunate enough to just have a, a, a USB cord that had a gap in it that I could make these pins fit, so that when I pulled the headphone in or pushed the headphone out. The USB cord didn't come with it. So let's take a moment. Oh, also, let me point out that I print uh, the headphone thing in this orientation where this is the base down here because it turns out that you can you can print on a 45 degree overhang without worrying about support. So this printed just perfectly like this. So uh, let's watch that print. <laughs> All right, and we are back. Finally, I put together the fan controller, uh, the fan control holder, which is these two units. Originally, I built this gray box, which is the actual fan control holder, and I fitted the proper curve so the fan could fit in the curve right. And this took a couple tries. I had to build it and then move it by about a half a millimeter out and then another half a millimeter out. And then on, when I finally printed it, I printed it a half a millimeter too big and it wobbled, which I didn't like. So it, it, it took, I think, probably five printing iterations before I got the exact size, not just from the calipers where I measured it, but from um, actually dropping it in the thing. And, and that was really an interesting discovery, is that the exact measurement that you take with the calipers doesn't necessarily translate into a perfect fit. You have to try it and test it which is exactly like, like software. You have to try it and test it and see how it performs. So then <clears throat> I designed this piece here, this angle piece, <clears throat> excuse me, so that 
when this stays level, the fan holder slots in this way and doesn't drop out. Now, it turns out that the first time I designed this, I designed it backwards, so the fan holder was pointing down. Um, it took me a little while to realize that, so I went and redid it and then printed, uh, printed it right. So now you've sort of seen the 3D design pretty well. Uh, let's print the fan holder, and after that, let's go into assembling this whole thing. Okay, so let's take a look at all the pieces now that they're pulled together. This is the main box, uh, which everything pretty much attaches to. You can see where the holes are on it. This will hold the Apple TV remote, which will slide in. This is the fan slot, which will eventually sit like that so that it's easy to take in and out. This unit holds the USB cable, which will slot in here and go all the way down. You can kind of see it there. And then I'll take it out. I don't want to put these two together yet. Uh, let's put this out of the way because we're going to be gluing things. And then the headset itself slots in here. Let's do that again so you can see it. You can kind of see the inside. The headset will slot in here and be charged when it slots in. So it's got its own little dock that comes into play. Actually, I, let's, let's hook the USB cable up so you can see that because that's too cool to just ignore. All right, so the cable goes like that. It goes a teeny weeny slot in the cable. You can sign it, see it in that picture there, right? Right over here. You can see where there's a gap, and that gap fits in that slot, like so. It's a form fit. And then when the headset slots in, it just pops right into there. So you can see it plugging right into USB, and then it comes back out. And there's a this area here allows for the fact that there's these raised buttons. You can see them raised in the picture there. The key to constructing this whole thing are the pins. And so I printed off a whole set of pins. I made some extras just in case I lost some. And it's time to start putting the pins in, putting using some crazy glue to glue them in and uh, get them all set. So uh, let's add some crazy glue and let's try to get a pin in there get those pins in. As you can see, there's a set of pins in the fan holder. And uh, so we're at a, a pretty decent place. I'm going to add some pins also to the uh, headphone holder and let's move on. These two pieces go together to provide a spacer. If you look at it, you can kind of see it from this angle to slightly space off that section of the TV. You can see this did not go all the way in. The pins just did not make it completely in. But that's as far as they're going. There's just no movement inside. So I decided to give up on mounting the Apple TV remote part for a moment and went on to gluing on the other portions. Uh, eventually what I did is, is decide to come back to it, but right here I'm uh, applying glue for the fan holder, give it a decent amount of glue, and then uh, get it mounted onto uh, the overall framework. And as you can see, that's what the pins look like once they go through. Um, it's a pretty tight hold mechanically, and now um, I'm going to start cleaning out those holes, making them bigger, 
grinding them out so I can actually fit the Apple TV holder, uh, Apple TV controller holder the way I want it to. Fortunately, the piece finally fit. You know, one of the interesting things about this is that there is post-processing after printing it. It's not, you don't just sit down and design it on your screen and boom, it's done. If you're doing a custom design, there may be tweaking or testing or redesigning. Uh, when, after I glued it, I clamped it on down and then uh, went to work on the final main bracket that holds it to the monitor. Uh, glued that in, added all the pins for that. Um, that actually has six pins holding it. So I want to talk for a minute about the lessons learned in putting this thing together. First off, I want to mention that I thought of this like a software designer in that I built modules and I tried to build reusable modules. So I built the fan controller as a mod, the fan holder as a module. I built the Apple TV slide as a module. I built each of these things as individual modules and then put them together as a whole. I actually tried building the whole in a, in a first rev that didn't work and I learned a few things about that. In the first rev I learned that the MakerBot and supports don't go well together. They're, they're okay but they're really problematic when you're trying to build something and it would be better to build it with as few supports as possible. So that dictated how I printed these things on the print bed as you saw earlier. Um, I learned that uh, when I put these things together, the use of pins, originally I tried to make the pins exactly the size of the holes, obviously that didn't work, so I tried different scaling for the pins to see what would go together. I learned that it was a little harder to do than I expected because I'm not quite as used to building plastic objects as you know, I might be, I'm a software guy. But I also was able to harken back to the days when I built plastic models, which was kind of fun. Um, I learned that this is not only something that gets work done, but is actually really quite fun to do. And I learned I could build something very, very custom just for what I need. I probably did um, 10 or 15 revs of the various pieces of this. I'll probably do another article on that. But I tried each size and I scaled the size to make sure that I could fit the headphones. And then I built, I separately built the USB holder and I made sure that I could fit the USB holder and each of these things were separate things. I, I tooled the curve that goes in here to hold the fan and I did a couple shots where the fan holder wouldn't fit in, things like that. I individually designed each of these pieces and just printed those out as I went along. And I learned that it was possible to do it, no single part of it was too difficult, although you know, it took a while to do, but that was because I'm learning. I've never really built anything like this before, ever, in any environment. I mean, this is a completely custom, many different shapes, many different angles piece that I was able to build. So the, the other part I learned from this is that this is doable. And it doesn't require a tremendous amount of 3D design experience. It requires you to think about it. It requires you to kind of look at it and get a feel for what you're doing and learn lessons from what doesn't work. It requires you to stick with it because I did one that I didn't like and I could have just said, no, I'm not doing it anymore, but I really wanted to learn this and I wanted to make some progress with it. So I went back to the drawing board and rethought it and watched a bunch of YouTube videos to learn about, you know, how you place things, excuse me, how you place things on the bed so they print as good as possible, things like that. But overall, this was a fascinating project and I'm going to get something that I will drive use of every single day, multiple times during the day. And that's what I see as the future of 3D printing. I mean, yes, there's product design and yes, there's the opportunity for small companies, but the ability for someone to just design something for their own use to improve their productivity or for fun or whatever, straight from absolutely nothing for, I don't know, with all the parts, with all the, the, the samples I built, with all the little pieces I did, it's probably 20 bucks of plastic at most and I've got something super custom and super fit for what I want. So once again, I want to make a shout out to the MakerBot guys and thank them for uh, providing the, the MakerBot to help us do this DIY IT discovery series here on ZDNet. 
Uh, I also want to remind you that there's a little subscribe button down there if you want to go ahead and hit it when I have new uh, videos for the Discovery Series, you'll be notified. And thank you very much. This has been a lot of fun. Go out there and make something cool. Tell me what you're doing. If I get a couple people sending me some videos about cool projects, I'll, I'll do a ZDNet article on it. Let me know what you're doing. My name is David Gewertz for ZDNet's DIY IT. Have a great time and build something neat.